Welcome to another edition of the latest Shiny Podcast. This is Stephen Spector with uh, Rob Hirschfeld. Hello, Stephen. And today we are going to talk about the Rack and Beta. This is very exciting. Um, you know, Digital Rebar Provision 3.1 is out and is underway and now followed up nicely by uh, Rack and uh, Beta. It's almost like two product launches at once. They're, they're very t closely linked because there were features in 3.1 that are essential to what we're doing with the Rack and uh, add-ons. So. so let's talk about what um, what's the Rack and Beta all about before we even talk about features. You know, what, what's kind of the idea? You know, I know Digital Rebar 3.1's out and people go play with that. So. What is it that the Rack and Beta is providing? So it's providing a, a library, a package library of reusable physical operations content uh, and plugins and processes and procedures. So what we've really worked, we've been this is this is Rackin's mission, right? Uh -huh. in, in, a, in a nutshell, is we're trying to make it so that operations at this foundational level, this physical level, are repeatable and best practices so that we don't have every data center inventing their own way to boot servers. That, we just think that's wrong. Um, and we know from our OpenStack days that if we can fix that problem, everything you build on top of it is faster and easier and more flexible. And so you know, we're, the, the rack end has always been about this. The neat thing with this new launch for us is that we're finally making those best practices available in a way that people can download them push them right into the digital rebar provision and then they can incrementally expand their automation capabilities you don't you don't have the complexity up front you add it and then we've made it click push button easy to say oh i want to go shopping for kubernetes pieces uh -huh. let me download that into my into my provision endpoints and if you have a lot of provision endpoints then you can manage all of them from this one one console so Oof, boy, a lot of a lot of sort of management and and reuse capabilities built in, and, and a big part of this also is the user interface. And yes. I think a big p, a big uh, concept I think is good for people to understand, as well as where this sits between on and off premises, is is the, you know the rack end user interface the UX. So <laughs> so let's talk about the, that. Yeah, this one's different than people expect uh -huh. right? because digital rebar provision is very carefully designed to be a standalone service. It doesn't tether to the internet, it doesn't phone home, it doesn't break the firewall boundaries or air gap boundaries, which means it can operate completely, you know, stand, it, doesn't, it doesn't require any infrastructure around it. It is that, that, that starting seed. So we, we have to be able to push things to it. And since you put digital rebar provisioning infrastructure behind your firewalls in protective ways, and we don't tether it, you have to have this intermediate point to take content from RackN, take these packages from RackN, and then upload them into your digital rebar endpoints. And conveniently, your browser mm -hmm. is that intermediary. So your browser can get on both networks and then download the content, um, the packages from RackN, and then through the browser pushes them straight into the digital rebar endpoints. And when you connect to the endpoints, it'll tell you if things are out of date. You know that you can re-upload the latest pieces. Now, if you don't have browser access or that's a problem, you can still use the CLI and upload the content bundles um, and packages and plugins. You can do all that stuff by hand. It's a lot more work. Yeah, but this, this UI gives you really a picture of everything going on. You can see everything happening, the whole data center, and it can sit outside the firewall or inside the firewall? Well, right? you're using it from inside your firewall. Okay. Right? So we don't have any access inside of people's firewall. Okay. There's no VPN or secret tunnel, none of that. You are in your data center, you have access to the endpoint, right. and you are accessing the digital rebar endpoint. What we're doing is we're providing a management experience, right? One of the new features for digital rebar provision is a WebSocket interface, so we can actually stream events out of a running endpoint and watch what's happening. Mm -hmm. Um, so that comes straight back to your browser. And then you, you're in the middle of the library. You can attach to the library and see what's new and, and go shopping, well, literally go shopping. Yeah, go shopping, I like that. Um, and so, so it's, but it's different because there's, you're not going to our website and pushing a button on the website and then having um, you know, sort of a control flow back to the endpoint. You are always in direct contact with the endpoint and we are not. So okay, so it's in, it's there's in between. That you you are the in between. You're the in between. The, the operator is the in between because this is there is no more foundational layer. There's nothing more basic mm -hmm. than, than what we're doing. Yeah. And so we don't want to be. You, know, you don't want us in the middle. We don't want to be in the middle of it. 
it's running your servers, and so you know, you maintain control from that perspective. Uh, and then you could you know put services on top that phone home and do things like mm -hmm. that. We're happy you know that we're 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 building on on top of all sorts of things for that. But this is about you. Yeah, and so the big part of this beta is to get this in the hands of as many operators as you can, obviously, and so they can try it. So they can see what you're talking about. I think I think people sometimes hear it and go, yeah, right. But, but what's <laughs> nice is it doesn't take long to get this set up. It's shorter than listening to this podcast. Yep. And, and you can have it up and running, and then you can play with it and try it. So we should be very specific. Yep. We, we're using the term beta. Yeah. Digital rebar provision is version 3.1. Right, it's battle hardened. It's stable. It's a release. Yeah, that's that is, that is out. Yes, and and Rackn is providing a community UX. You don't have to sign up or you know pay us money. Mm -hmm. You can use Digital Rebar with the Rackn community endpoint pieces, completely free. You don't tell us. It's it's just an open source thing. Right. If you sign into Rackn, there are added packages. There's more library content that you can use, and there's some UX features that you would unlock. Um, that that part of the experience is the beta. Is the beta, yes. Right. So this is where we are working with community to, to build these new content packages, to add in value added pieces. So like things like our IPMI interface, which is really popular, um, or our Terraform interface, right, which needs the IPMI pieces. Right. Those are what we're putting into beta. So people who sign up with the beta, they get access to the UX and the content and things like that, and then we're offering uh, ex you know, pricing advantages for people who sign up with us um, and get the basic support. They'll get whatever's in the beta um, for a year. I think I'm, I'm, we're arguing back and forth for a lifetime. Um, I yeah, I don't can't commit with that. In the, we in, can't in, commit in, pricing, in the but but bang on us. Um, and, and the pricing is super simple with yeah. Rackend. It's a dollar per node per month at the starting point for the basic support in the UX and, and uh, you know pretty good set of libraries. Mm -hmm. um, so you know we don't we don't want this to be complex. It's very you know we want people to be to be going. Mm -hmm. And then when we get into more complex things like rate and BIOS configuration that require a lot of engineering work for us to support and you know really have to be just right, those are things that, that become premium services. And, and a big part of this beta, I think, is the feedback. I mean, of course. I mean, you got. Like, I assume that I'm assuming that we assume that. So you have the community. You know, the open source community is real good. There is no problem in the digital rebar world. People talking to you back and forth. <laughs> but I think the beta may. You know, some of the people that try the beta may be operators of some larger companies and stuff and things like that. And so, you know, if you're listening to this and you go and try it, you know, really understand there is a team of people back at Rack yeah, really interested to hear what you have to say. We what we care about operators. Yeah, we really like the. You know, hey, if this button was blue instead of red, it would help me identify it, or you know, the opposite. And and you know, we really do. This is this is still sort of us exposing a lot of digital rebar capability. There's just a, a tremendous amount of capability in, in digital rebar that we're just trying to help people use. Uh, and then, based on feedback from the beta, we're going to be taking it to the next level and building. You know, sort of the the quick click. Oh, I need to deploy. You know. Uh, you know, whole data center at once. How do I how do I minimize that effort? Um, actually, with digital rebar provision and the state, the new staging features, it's, it's pretty cool. literally yeah, it's a couple of, it's a couple of clicks. But then monitoring it and caring and feeding and things like that. That's that's really where the beta is going. And, and there's no charge for the beta. We'll be clear on that. And yes. sometimes people get confused. So um, if you go out to slash beta what you'll see is um, a form. Basically, not even a form. It's just you need your email. And then once you uh, put your email in there, it will you'll get an email with all the information, the instructions. the instructions, where to load down, and everything. And again, you know, to point out, if you're in the community and you want to play with digital rebar provision, but you're not really don't want to give your email, we understand it's open source. But there's instructions right below where to go, what to do, and and you know, really flexible and open about that. And you can totally start with digital rebar, right? Don't don't you never visit Rack and go to rebar right. digital. You install. Uh, Digital rebar provision on your system. Start playing with it. You can, you know, use the UX without giving us your email, right? It's mm -hmm. all we're very community sensitive about that. And then when you're ready to get some of the advanced stuff, then you take that leap. Yeah, call Rob. 
you know, he's a friendly guy, <laughs> and you can always you can always reach him. But there are, you know, so no call me, call somebody who really knows how. Oh, to oh, oh, we have some. There's some <laughs> operators here, but uh, anyway, there's a whole group of people. Literally, here. operators are standing by. Operators, <laughs> yes, I think that's great. <laughs> I like that. Operators are standing by. I think that needs to be used somewhere. That's great. Oh, well, yeah. well, congratulations on getting um, you know the rack and beta out and the digital rebar provision release. It's, it's very exciting, and uh, I encourage everyone to go out to rack and and. Take a look at this technology. I think uh, you'll be shocked how easy it is and how quickly this does things. And then you're going to go, where was this thing? What is it? Where was this my whole life? I, I, it's simple, it's simple is really hard. And we've we've worked a long time to make this simple. So. Yeah, I think simple, open, fast is what I've heard you say. Simple, open, simple, simple, open, fast. Well, thanks again, everyone, for listening. Go to rackn.com slash beta. Uh, get started today. There's no time like the present. And uh, Rob, thanks for joining us. And before you go, yeah. I have a postscript because I'm going to send this to Joseph George. Community, when when we were at Dell, Mr. small aside, the blue jacket himself of OpenStack. Joseph George, who's now working for Cray, yeah, um, loved this tagline, and so I can't. We can't use this tagline without giving a postscript shout out to Joseph George for the simple, open, fast uh, tagline. So Joseph, we still love it. You're the best. Have a good day. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot. We'll talk again soon.